Hey there, Russ here. Welcome back to the shop. All right, I finally did it. I decided to make my own version of an ATX bench power supply. I have a bench that I'm going to put it in, and you're going to see how this thing fits into the scheme of things on that metal cabinet that I have. This thing is awesome. But I did some things to make in mind to make it easy to make. You don't have to go through all those things that you see a lot of guys make if you really don't want to spend a lot of time and energy. Mine's pretty simple and easy to make and is very versatile still. So let me show you how I did it. With the breakout board, it, you can do one of these things in under five minutes, honestly. So first thing you have to do is when you get these boards, remember any ATX box out there should work with these, it, it, both the 20 pin and the 24 pin. That's what I like about these here is that once I found my first power supply, because now I'm starting to look for those, I got it through nothing, through my son, and he's going to help me get a couple more. This one's a 250 watt, which is pretty good. That'll give me about 5 amps at 12 volts, uh, thereabouts. So that's all I really need at the moment. But the other thing I did, the two things I did distinctly with this is uh, I tied up my cord so this thing is now nice and compact and easy to use. And all I did was Velcro it in place so that it's out of the way. Uh, also, I tied this one up, my main plug-in, with zip ties so that I got it tight, evenly spaced all the way down. So this makes it nice and tight, makes it easy. The breakout board, I mounted it on a little wood plaque here with legs on it to keep it raised up so that all my electrical connections on the underside of this thing are all protected and you could enclose this if you want to but also what makes this thing nice is I put a big inch and an eighth magnet on here a rare earth magnet so that now all I have to do is just clip it and this thing is ready to go I can now do what I want with it and use it without it fumbling around or anything and it's just attached and it only took me a couple minutes to do it this way the extra wires they come off the plug-in, go the other way. I cut them all free, and then I, bat I batched them together in by color and put heat shrink on those so as to seal them up. And I just taped it to keep them out of the way, but yet they're still long enough that if I want to tap into these, I can do it. So this thing was really easy to up and make. The banana, I did change out some of these connectors to banana connectors using my kit. So now I have my 3 volt, my 5 volt, and my 12 volt positives I replaced. And I replaced the negative on the end here. All the negatives are the same. So I replaced, I only need to replace one negative. And that gives me a banana terminal instead of just a screw down with a spade connector. So this makes these things a lot more versatile. And it cost me like 50 cents a piece for these terminals in the reality. So... This was actually pretty cheap to add to this. Like I said, I got five, five, probably five and a half dollars in it. That ain't bad. So let me show you where I put it because you're going to like this too, where I keep it. Uh, since I have a metal cabinet, I'm able to take advantage of some things that normally wherever you would do this, you'd have to just build a box for this and everything. But with mine, I can take it out of the cabinet and use it like this if I want to take it somewhere and use it somewhere else in the shop or something. Or I can put it in and it only takes a couple of minutes. So if you turn around just whoop, All the way around here and here's my cabinet. This is the drawer I'm going to be using for this So since I have everything nice and neatly wound up, I can just drop this Right in the drawer like so whoops. That's upside down Take that off out of the way. Now let's try putting it in the right way. And then these just set down in here. And this is the way it's stored away when it's not in use. Out of the way, out of, not obtrusive. So if I need it, it only takes a couple minutes to set it up. I pull the cord out, and I can plug it in right here. I take my breakout board, and it just snaps right to my drawer right there. If you had a regular drawer in like this, and it was wood, you could just put a couple of steel plates there, a steel plate there to magnetize to and do the same thing with any cabinet. So the breakout board can be brought out and it's pretty easy to use now right here at my workbench. 
and it's not obtrusive or in my way at all by doing it this way. And when I'm done, everything just tucks away back in there. So let's take this thing for a test drive. What do you think? Let me show you what I can do with this so you get a rough idea of quickly how well it works, the different voltage, and how it's easy at my fingertips. So we're going to need our little light. This is that LED light that we had before. And I also have some test leads that I made up. And this. No, that's not my lunch. That's that volt amp meter that we made. And we're going to use that. So there's my N. I'm going to just set that right here. And let's just wire this up real quick and show you how well and easy this thing works. So I have some quick leads that I made here. These are uh, banana clips, banana terminals. So I just go from banana terminal to banana terminal with it. And that's hooked up. I have uh, one that is a banana terminal to alligator clips and one that is just all alligator clips also, which, like I said, any of those will fit into the banana clips without any problem. So, now that we have this hooked up and I plug it into the 10 volt, let's turn it on, and guess what? We have 10 volts. Actually, it's supposed to be 12. According to the sticker, it's supposed to be 12. Why it's 10 and a half, I don't know. Maybe something weird with this particular uh, ATX, but it is coming from the ATX at 10 and a half volts because I've checked it right at the plug in, unplugged, and so it's not the breaker box, the breakout board doing it. So there's something weird about this particular one, but I'll replace it with another one probably sometime. But I work with 10 and a half volts as much as, as easily as I can 12. Uh, if I want to vary the voltage, I can vary it here. There's my 5 volts. And then I would tap in here for my using it. Or I can go down to 3.3 .3 volts if I'm doing something with small voltage. So this thing is pretty versatile to go anywhere. So I put it back into the 12 volt one. And let's take these leads. And this is just the two alligator clips. This will work. Let me turn this off. And just take a second to hook this all up. Negative. Positive. And now hooked up to the light. So when I turn it on, not so bright. We're getting a nice bright light at 10 volts. And I'm pulling 1.6 amps. Now, if you remember, those things were pulling... Um, the other day when I was doing the test with my little meter here, when I made that last week, um, these lights got pretty hot because we were running it off of 18 volts and it was pulling four, uh, right at four amps. So at 10, at 10 volts, it's only pulling 1.6 amps. And check this out. Let me move from 12 and let's move over to the, sorry about that. So I moved from the 12 over to the 5. Now you see the light gets dimmer. My voltage is now 4.8, and now I'm only pulling 160, 170 uh, milliamps. So it's doing pretty good, uh, and it's a lot less. So if I go to the three volts, now the amps I'm reading because that's too, that's smaller than than uh, uh, 90 amps or whatever. I forgot where it is, but anyway, it's showing that I'm running at two point. 8 volts and you can see I still have light so I can quickly easy go to any of these different power sources instantly and I can adjust it if instead of if I need to adjust it instead of this voltmeter I could very easily I'm working on making this one work for me I've been using it but now that I have this set up here I'm going to put this on a board just like I did this that has a magnet on it this is a boost buck converter with alligator clip. I mean, <laughs> with uh, banana terminals. And then I'll be able to do the same thing in the output here as I did here. This will be my output. And I can control the volts and the current from this buck uh, boost converter. So if I need to, I can just magnetize this here. And use this to plug in my power. Plug this in up here. And I have the same thing. So that's the plan. So I can also use any of that. And I also have a third voltmeter. 
so as you see, I don't need to have the voltmeter directly hooked to this unit. I may do that sometime, but I, at this point, I don't see any read to. But I took one of these, and you've seen these out there too. This is a 150 amp version. Two wires in. You hook it up to your power supply. Positive, negative. It has a magnet. I put a magnet on it so that it just sits right on there. And now there's my power supply out, and I can hook my load to, to the other. So this will actually work. What I like about this one, what makes this different than the others is it not only monitors the, the real-time voltage and load that's going on, the amps, it also is keeping track of it in history. So the whole session. So if you're monitoring something that is varying throughout an hour's time, if you want to monitor it for an hour, and the volts and the amps are varying, you can see how long it takes for amp hours. You can watch your amp hours and watt hours with this monitor. So it makes it handy to have. So I have all three, and I think that all three go up to at least 30 volts. So I'll be able to use this for the things that I use it for. If I ever go to more than 30 volts, which anything's possible, then I might change this. But right now, this is actually not a bad setup for a part-time electronic work. And when I'm done, to put everything away, it really is so easy. These cords are all, whoops, let me take this loose from here. But these cords are all very easily to just wrap up, and I keep them in this container. And then this box, this voltmeter, and, whoops, and this store in here. Uh, I keep this one over on this side right here if I need it and the other one I just kind of store up on the with the magnet so that's how this thing works that's just my light so I'm charging it right now anyway so to put this thing away is just as easy so when I'm done I can just unplug it And it's right there ready to use when I'm ready to use it. So it's really easy. It fits right into this whole thing with the magnetic front. It's really nice to be able to get out and have that right there at my fingertips. So I like the cabinet. And this is really a nice addition to this environment to be able to take advantage of having a ready-made power supply that I can use easily right here at my workstation instead of having to do all this over there bring it over here and solder and then take it back over there and and do testing and stuff and i can do everything right from this workbench now so i think i should probably give you a full tour of this workbench let's go back over here um i'll give you a tour of that whole workbench because i've done a lot of things to that since i first showed it to you and it's really turning out to be a really nice workstation uh, for my electrical, for my soldering, for hot gluing, and also I might have ideas of why I'll be able to do small bits of carving, like when I'm using my Dremel, and my Dremel will be available there. So I have a whole idea of what I'm doing with that, and I'll go over all that with you maybe and do a quick tour of how far along I am. And maybe you can give me some ideas of how to do some of the other things I want that thing to do. So uh, sharing ideas, that's what it's about. Anyway, that's my ATX, my ATX box bench supply, bench power supply. Um, I like my version of it. I think it works very well for me. It was real easy to make. So if you have any questions, any comments about any of this, any suggestions, just leave them down below because that's where all this OTB stuff comes from is with your help. So anyway, um, I think that's about it. If you like this video or you learned something here, hit that like button. Let's me know that I'm doing something right. Most importantly, please come back again because I'm nowhere near done. Thanks, and we'll see you guys again very soon.